Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to breathe life into an old laptop by removing Windows and installing Linux. Let's get started. So right here, uh, the specs are on screen. This is an old Acer netbook. Uh, you can see it's actually not very big at all. Uh, it is a fairly old computer, I'll say. Uh, so you can see it's rocking the uh, Intel Celeron N2830 uh, CPU. Uh, it does have eight gigs of RAM, so that is a bit of a redeeming factor in this. Uh, I believe the system only came with four, and I think I put an extra four in it at some point in time. I don't quite remember. Uh, it does have a 64-bit operating system on it with an x64-based processor. And if you're wondering why I would choose to upgrade Linux on this laptop, uh, you can see right now I'm running Windows 10. Uh, the CPU is bouncing all over the place. A lot of the times it is stuck at 100%, uh, which makes pretty much doing anything at all next to impossible. I mean, you can try to open browser tabs, maybe watch a YouTube video, check your email, try to do a document on here. And this computer is not going to be able to handle it. Uh, it is not a powerhouse by any stretch of the imagination. It never was. And as time goes on, it, it really shows its age. So Linux generally, uh, there are a lot of flavors of Linux out, out there, a lot of different versions of Linux, and a lot of them run, I would say, with less resources required than a traditional Windows PC would need. This PC is not going to be used by me, so I'm going to want to put a, a version of Linux on here that is easy to use for someone uh, who needs basic things. So they need to browse the internet, watch YouTube, maybe Netflix, uh, check emails, write documents, Excel sheets, uh, things like that. It's not going to be a gaming powerhouse. It's not going to be, for example, maybe a video editing powerhouse or a streaming powerhouse. It's really meant for basic computer needs. Uh, and right now, those basic computer needs are impossible to satisfy when the CPU is still running at 100%. So I was considering Ubuntu uh, or Ubuntu, however you decide to pronounce it. Linux Mint, which has been a long time popular one, and recently, uh, Manjaro, which has really taken off in popularity. To make matters even more confusing, um, each version of Linux usually has different desktop environments. Uh, those demand different resources. Uh, there's heavier versions, there's lighter versions. So for an older desktop, I'd probably recommend Mate, or XFCE. For this netbook, I'm going to use XFCE. It is a very, very light uh, version of the operating system and really zips along well on older hardware. And the reason I'm choosing Manjaro over Mint, uh, Mint has been one of the most popular ones for a very, very long time. It's very user-friendly, very easy to use. However, uh, Manjaro uses the same XFCE environment that I'd be looking for. And on top of that, it is the most popular one out there right now. Uh, and I just figured, why not give it a go? You, if you're familiar with Linux Mint and want to use Linux Mint, by all means, by all means, uh, choose whatever you want. I, I'm not going to say one's better than another. I'm just using Manjaro because it's popular and I'm curious to give it a whirl. This is the very first time I'm installing Manjaro on a device. So if I can't get it to work, I probably will just go the Linux Mint route, but we'll see. We'll give it a try and see how it goes. To pick up Manjaro, go over to manjaro.org. I'll leave a link in the description below. These operating systems are absolutely free which is the best part. Most of these Linux distributions, whether it's Linux Mint, Manjaro, Ubuntu, they're all generally free, uh, which is really, really awesome, especially when you're tinkering around and trying to choose a version that works for you. I'm not gonna say Manjaro is better than Mint. I'm not gonna say Mint is better than Ubuntu. Everyone has their own preferences. Everyone has their own tastes. And honestly, at the end of the day, just choose what works for you. So on the download page here, uh, there are different versions. You can see Manjaro XFCE, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And the different versions, they have two, uh, the Manjaro XFCE, uh, which is the full-blown ISO. It's got everything in it. There's also a minimal. 
So if you are looking for a very, very basic without extra applications installed or anything like that, uh, you can check out the XFCE Minimal. You can direct download it or torrent it. When I click Manjaro XFCE here, it will bring me to a separate page. And looking at the file name, it says Manjaro XFCE 18.0 stable x86 underscore 64. So at this point, I know it is a 64-bit operating system that I am downloading. If you need a 32-bit operating system, this step will be a little different for you. If you have a little beefier of a uh, computer that you are uh, repurposing, uh, feel free to check out Manjaro KDE Edition. It's a little more uh, intense when it comes to resources. It's a little heavier, but it is flashier. Once the ISO is done downloading, you will need a USB key to transfer the ISO on. What we're going to do is we're going to make a bootable USB key so that we can boot up the Linux image from the USB key in order to install it on the new computer. Now there are different ways to do this uh, and different programs. I recommend using a program called Etcher. It's available right here. I'll leave a link in the description as well. Uh, there's also a program called Rufus. There's one called Win32 Disk Imager. Really the preference is up to you. And now since this is uh, a 1.9 gigabyte image, I'd probably recommend using a four gig or higher USB stick. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm using an eight gig USB stick. So I have Etcher up here. I selected the ISO uh, that I downloaded, the Manjaro ISO. I'll highlight it here. You can see Manjaro XFCE 18.0. Uh, the generic flash drive that I'm using is eight gigabytes. And now I'm gonna click flash. So you can see it flashing right now, ETA of 10 minutes, nine minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, six minutes, five. So it's not gonna take very long at all. It's running right now at seven megabytes a second, give or take. This is a USB 2.0 device. If you have a 3.0, it may be a little faster. Once the image is done being flashed onto the USB, you're pretty much good to go. So at this point, you can restart your computer, make sure the USB is plugged in. And a pro tip here, I would also strongly advise that if you can have a wired connection, do it. Uh, I've noticed that sometimes installing Linux, the wireless card adapters are not installed right away. And it can be a bit of a hassle because then upon the initial installation, you will have to uh, make sure the wireless is connected, then everything will have to update and so on and so forth. If you do use the wired connection, more often than not that gets recognized and updates automatically install while you are installing Linux. So then your first time using it will be much less of a headache. And to boot up Linux uh, from the USB key, you will have to use one of the function keys on your keyboard when you first start the computer. So it may be delete, it may be F11, it may be F12, it may be F10, it may be F8. It all depends on your model of your computer. So if you don't know, you can always just trial and error it. So you start your computer up, start mashing the F keys until you get to the menu you want and it'll say select boot disk. And then you can flip it over to to select the USB key in order to boot up. So this part, I do have a boot menu open on the netbook. Uh, you can see the third option. It's, it's actually, you probably can't see. It's very hard to see at this point. Unfortunately, I cannot use my capture card as it doesn't work in the boot menu. So the third option that I have up here, the bottom option that's highlighted, is the USB stick that I just uh, put the ISO, ISO file on. So I'm gonna hit enter here on it and it should boot up into Manjaro. Again, I apologize as I cannot capture this uh, through the capture card, but you can see right here, welcome to Manjaro. So this is the very first screen that you will see if you successfully uh, put the ISO on the USB key and booted it up properly. If it boots up back into Windows, just restart the computer, uh, try a different F key, and see if it works. Alternatively, you can go into the BIOS and select the USB key to be the first boot device, and that will work also. So at this point, Manjaro is booting up. I do now have the capture card working, uh, and you can see that Manjaro is successfully booting off the USB key. Here's the first screen that I am looking at right now with Manjaro. 
Uh, at the top, it's faded now, but you could see that it did recognize the wired connection, which is gonna save me a huge headache later on when installing this for the first time. So right now it's not technically installed because I'm running it off the USB key. If I were to pull out the USB key, uh, the system would crash. So I do still have to install the operating system now from the USB key to the computer. So the next step is to head over to this little install icon right here and it installs the operating system onto the disk, which is exactly what I want to do. It says here, welcome to the Manjaro Linux 18.0 installer. I'll click next, because I do want it as English. Uh, it is identifying me as Toronto. That's where I am in Canada, so that's A-OK -okay with me. I'll click next. English Canada. And keyboard model is incorrect so it's showing as French Canada and I'm going to switch that to English US so at this point you're presented a list of options I've only got one hard drive in this computer uh, so what I'm going to do is select a race disk uh, I am replacing the operating system I'm not too concerned about the current version of Windows that's on it considering the current version barely runs so I'm erasing the disk I'm gonna select a race disk it's going to completely erase everything that was on it and just format it uh, to be 100% used by Manjaro. Now I can see here it is going to be the full hard drive to be used with Manjaro. You can create uh, custom partitions if you would like if you have reason to. For the purposes of this video I'm just selecting erase disk and proceeding that way. And before you start the installation, it gives you one last look at everything you're trying to do. Uh, here you can verify exactly what you've just set up. I'm going to click install. And just like that, Manjaro is now installing on the disk. So it's currently erasing the memory that's on the hard drive, replacing the entire thing with Manjaro Linux. Uh, if you do unplug your USB at this point or unplug um, your computer or stop the installation, Things may get messed up a little bit, so you may have to redo the entire thing. Installation should take between 20 and 30 minutes, uh, I guess depending on the size of the hard drive, depending on the speed of the computer and your USB stick. So it took me just a little over 20 minutes. Uh, it says all done. So at this point I can click restart now. When it shuts down I can pull out the USB stick and it should successfully boot from the hard drive. All right, and just like that, I have my first successful boot up. Uh, Manjaro is booted up off of the hard drive and it's showing me right now I have 327 available updates. So I will run those updates and see what needs to be updated and then I will take a look to see if I do need to install any optional drivers uh, to make sure everything is okay. And now to take a look at how the CPU is doing, I can see it's rocking around three, four uh, percent. Memory is at 12 percent. So Things are going pretty smoothly. Uh, this is not using a lot of resources to run, and now my computer is a lot quicker than it used to be. All right, now I've got a bunch of applications running, so I have four different tabs running on Firefox. I'm running a YouTube video, which is one of my YouTube videos, as well as I have um, a document open that I can be typing on. I'm looking at my CPU usage. I'm sitting around 39%. Uh, memory is at 19%, a lot better, a heck of a lot better than running Windows 10. So if you have an old laptop uh, that's sitting around collecting dust because it's unusable, you just want to use it for simple things, for example, web browsing or document typing, checking emails, checking Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to do, take a look at putting Linux on it. Linux is free. There are tons of different options out there. You can do Mint, Ubuntu, Manjaro. Those are pretty much the top three. Uh, and there are tons of different versions uh, within those as well. XFCE, uh, if you wanted to do Mate, if you wanted to do the full-blown, uh, for example, Linux Mint has Cinnamon. Uh, it's, it's all up to you. And it's free, easy to do. You can fiddle around with it. Uh, my only recommendations are, first and foremost, uh, making sure 
that you have all your information backed up on your current PC. If there's anything on it you need, take it off. Secondly, when you're installing, make sure you're connected via Ethernet if possible. Uh, if you are connected with a wired connection, installation is a breeze. For example, on this PC, I didn't need to install any additional drivers. They were automatically all installed Everything worked well, Wi-Fi worked, Bluetooth worked, the touchpad worked, uh, it identified the video card correctly, it identified absolutely everything correctly. It was really, really great and I didn't have to worry about anything. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. Uh, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.